Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Only Truth podcast. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. If you are new here, my name is Brenda and I make faith based content. I post new videos every Monday. And I feel like I just need to reiterate or re explain the meaning of the Only Truth podcast. Why did I choose that name? I chose that name because I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Jesus has radically changed my life. And now I live for him. Um, And when I say the only truth, it is because Jesus says in his word in the gospel that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one can come to the Father except through him. And we live in a culture where we don't want to be offensive. Um, But this is for the sake of eternity. This is for the sake of souls. I'm not just saying it to say it, like I'm saying it because I've experienced it, I've lived it, I've encountered Jesus and he has changed my life and I will never stop sharing this good news that Jesus is the only truth. He is the only way to God. He is the only way that salvation is given to us. Um So with that being said, I just felt like being extra bold this morning, I guess. But with that being said, if you cannot see from the title of today's video, I know that this applies to me. I hope that this can apply to you too. I'm sure it can. Um, And it is to let go of control and watch God work. So I want to start off this episode with a specific verse, and this is from Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4. And it says, For since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for him. There's also a verse that is literally the background of my phone right now, and it's from Exodus 14, verse 14. And it's basically the Egyptians are about to pursue them and... God's people are scared. They're nervous. They're like, I don't know what to do. I can't fight these people. And that is when God tells them, you need only to be still. I'm the one that goes before you. I am fighting your battles for you. Um, And so I feel like God kind of just caused my eyes to land on my phone, um, the background and you know what it says earlier this week. And I was like, okay, you know how God like sometimes will hide things from your conscious or kind of just like you just get so used to something, but then maybe in a different season, God will like highlight something to you or he'll make something stick out or he'll like make you see something that you haven't seen before, even though it was right in front of your eyes the whole time. It was like kind of one of those moments where I just felt like God was speaking to me. And just saying, you need only to be still in this situation. Um, And yeah. And I didn't realize that I have a hard time doing this. And I wonder if this applies to any of you guys in your life, how you feel like you are in a certain situation where you're not consciously being like, I'm going to help God out. I think he needs my help. It's not like we really think that God needs our help, but that's what we do um, when we try to take control of certain situations that God is wanting to unfold naturally. Um, Because we can just be like, you know what? Like, I feel like I want to speed this process up. Like, I want to know if this is of God. I want to know if this is God's will, if this is his leading. I want to know if he... I want to know like what he's going to do in the situation. So like, how can I speed this process up? Like how can I avoid like all of the, the things that come with this season to just get to the end of it? You know, I feel like that's kind of the thought process that we have in our minds. Um, and we can make it sound so holy. We can be like, you know, I don't want to waste any time for the kingdom. Like, this season, like I need to know what God's doing in this season. I need to know his will. So like I will do what I have to do. 
I'll have the conversations that I think need to be had in order for like this season to hurry up and just so that I can be sure of God's will. And I think that it is so hard for us in today's culture because obviously we live in an instant gratification culture where we get everything we want when we want it. Um, but God doesn't work that way. And God is not impatient like we are. God is not. One of my mentors early on in my walk would always tell me like, God is not a microwave God. He's not, you know, like something you could just stick in the microwave and it's done and it's ready. Like God is a God who takes his time. He cares about all the details. Like God is not in a rush. We're in a rush. We're like, oh my gosh, I need to know like how this is going to end, how this is going to unfold, what's going to happen. Like, and God is like, why? Why do you need to know? Why do you need to do this? Why do you need to figure it out when God is the one who is all powerful, all knowing? He is sovereign over all and he is in control of our situations. And so, for example, in my life recently, I've been in a situation where I cannot control the outcome, but I would like to know the outcome. And I feel like in my head, I've been just bouncing around all these ideas of like what I can do to make sure that I can know the end result. And I just feel like God is like, Brenda, you got to let go. You got to let it go. Um, as long as you are trusting in me to direct your steps and to show you my will, it is going to unfold in front of you. Nothing that you could do on your own strength or power is going to be able to accomplish my will. But when you wait for me and when you trust in me, that is when I work. And so I just feel like God has been just really putting this lesson in my heart um, so strongly recently. And I'm just, I've been very blessed by it. I don't know if you guys have heard the analogy with, you know, Jesus. He's not a passenger seat type of guy. When you invite Jesus into your life, when you invite him into your heart, um, just like think of it like you're letting him in your car. Jesus doesn't want the back seat. He doesn't want the passenger seat. He wants the driver's seat and he wants you in the back seat with your seatbelt on. Like Jesus is the one that is in control and is driving our lives. It is not up to us. And sometimes we want to get in the, in the passenger seat and, you know, slip in there and be like, oh, maybe, maybe I should do this. Maybe we should take this turn. Maybe this would be a good idea. And Jesus is like, excuse me, who's driving in a loving way though. Um, and so I was just reminded of that analogy recently because it is, it is Jesus who is in control. He is the King of our lives. He is Lord. He is savior. And when Jesus is Lord over our lives, it means that his word is the final word. His will is the final will. His authority is over our lives. And I always go back to this verse, and this is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. It doesn't say in all your ways, try to figure it out on your own strength and try to come up with methods on how to fix this situation or like figure out what the end result is going to be and he will direct your paths. No, God says in all your ways, acknowledge me and I will direct your paths. Acknowledge Jesus. Say, Jesus, I need you to show me your will in this situation 
like close the doors that need to be closed, open the doors that need to be open. Um, help me to sit back and let you do your thing, Jesus. Show me your will. It says when you do that, when you acknowledge Jesus in all your ways, in all your seasons, in all your situations, he will direct your paths. And that is a promise of God that we can stand firm on. And, you know, I also just want to say to ask God for wisdom during these seasons because I also don't mean to sit on your butt and do nothing and just like be like, God's going to do it. He's going to drop something down from heaven. And like, I do, I think that we should be using wisdom to navigate situations where if we are able to, you know, put in some effort, like if it's applying for a job or working or, you know, staying healthy or fit um, or eating right, like stuff like that, you know, we obviously are able to put in our effort and, you know, be good stewards of what God has given us. You know, I don't want this to be taken like a whole nother way where it's like, don't do anything. You know, obviously like there's a balance, you know, but when it comes to a point where it's just constantly on your mind and you're like, just stressing about it, you're thinking about it, you're like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? No, it, that is like when we totally surrender everything down at God's throne and be like, you are going to make your will clear to me because I acknowledge you and I thank you in advance. Um, bold prayers, I'm telling you, so, so powerful. But yeah, that is today's episode. Um, it was a little bit shorter, but I just really wanted to get this word out there. And I just want to say thank you for tuning in, for listening to this video. I really appreciate it. And if you feel like someone needs to hear this message, I just want to encourage you to share it with someone who you feel needs to hear it. Um, I just encourage you to keep walking with Jesus, to keep pursuing him, and just remember that he is always pursuing you. Um, and I hope you just know how loved you are. And I just want to encourage you to keep going and that we're in this together and that you are not alone. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you did enjoy, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will see you guys in my next video, but in the meantime, I hope that you have an amazing and blessed and beautiful day.